In 1868, Christopher Scholes invented the QWERTY keyboard layout for his typewriter. The QWERTY layout was designed to prevent the keys from jamming by separating commonly used letter pairs such as TH or ST. The name QWERTY comes from the first six letters in the keyboard's top row and has since become the standard for typewriters and now keyboards. Six years after the invention of the QWERTY keyboard came the first mass-produced typewriter, the Remington Model 1. The Model 1 only allowed for capitalized letters to be typed out, as it wasn't until 1878 where the Remington Model 2 introduced the shift key, allowing users to choose between lower and uppercase letters. The last 25 years of the 19th century saw the growth of corporations and reinventions of the business office, as typewriters started to replace handwritten work. Offices were redesigned to allow for easier use of typewriters, and most employees were trained to use them in order to speed up their work. In 1936 came the invention of the Dvorak keyboard layout. It was invented by Augustus Dvorak. The major feature of Dvorak's keyboard was that the most commonly used letters were in rows. Dvorak argued that this layout would allow users to reduce finger movement compared to the QWERTY layout, therefore increasing typing speed. There is no proof to this day that this layout is better for faster typing, as people type faster in whichever layout they learn first and use the most. In 1948, one of the first commercially available computers was released. The keyboard used for this computer consisted of eight keys with numbers ranging from zero to seven. This was a major leap towards creating what the modern keyboard is today. It's important to note this keyboard only allowed for inputting commands into the computer rather than using it to type something out with letters. 23 years after the first commercially available computer came the Kanback 1. Released in 1971, Kanback was the first personal computer. The Kanback was relatively small, which made it possible for the first time ever to have a PC in your home. This innovation paved the way towards the future of computers and keyboards. Ten years after the release of the Kanback, IBM introduced its PC with the 83-key Model F keyboard. While this wasn't the first personal computer and keyboard, it created a standard that in many ways has dominated the market over the last 40 years. Shortly after the release of the IBM PC came the release of a well-known class of IBM PC keyboards, the Model M. Some people love this keyboard so much that they still use it to this day. One of the most beloved parts of this keyboard is the sound it makes when clicking the keys as well as the strong build quality and antique look. The next iteration of the keyboard was once again done by IBM with their Rapid Access keyboard. This was IBM's first keyboard to feature multimedia keys and programmable function keys, which are now widely used in modern keyboards. Microsoft released their first keyboard in 1994, called the Microsoft Natural Keyboard. It had an innovative ergonomic design that was intended to reduce the strain on the hands and wrists during long periods of use. Microsoft used an arc shape to reduce the distance the fingers have to travel during typing. This keyboard made a significant impact on what an ergonomic keyboard looks like today. The first wireless keyboard for a PC was a Logitech cordless desktop. It was released in 2003 and consisted of a wireless desktop and mouse that used a USB receiver to wirelessly connect for a range of up to 10 meters. This was the first time desktop users had access to greater mobility as they weren't limited by a cord. Since its release, Logitech Cordless Desktop has paved the way for many other wireless keyboards and mice. As the keyboard became more similar over time, the next focus for companies was on the typing and gaming experience. Cherry MX gained popularity in the mid-2000s as mechanical keyboards began to make a comeback in the gaming and enthusiast communities. This was partly due to the earlier mentioned IBM Model M keyboard that used buckling spring switches. Companies such as Razer and Corsair began using Cherry MX switches on their gaming keyboards and continue to do so as these types of switches are still widely used today for their high quality, sound, and tactical feedback. During this era, many keyboards also got backlight support, allowing users to navigate the keyboard better in the dark and to give them a new look. Custom keyboards have been around for quite some time, but they have become more popular in recent years, particularly in the last decade. The rise in popularity of mechanical keyboards with their tactile switches and customizable keycaps has led to an increase in interest in custom keyboards. The rise in popularity has created a market for custom keyboard parts, making it easier than ever for enthusiasts to build their own keyboards from scratch. Today, there are countless options for customizing your keyboard, from unique keycaps to different types of switches, allowing people to create truly one-of-a-kind keyboards that fit their specific needs and preferences. Finally, we come to where the most advanced keyboards are today. Currently, a company called Wooting is selling keyboards that use a full-range analog switch with the Hall Effect. This works with a magnet that is attached to the stem that then gets detected by a Hall Effect sensor underneath the PCB. As the magnet comes closer to the sensor, the stronger the signal is, allowing for features such as custom actuation points and rapid trigger. A customizable actuation point will allow the user of the keyboard to dictate how far down the key switch should be pressed before input is detected. This can be customized with all of the keys. 
This feature allows for any actuation point between 0.1 millimeters to 4 millimeters. Alongside this, the wrapper trigger feature detects any decrease in pressure on the key and will automatically stop the key press. This is especially important in gaming as it will give a much more responsive feel. I believe that the success and the future of the keyboard will be using technology similar to the one Wu Ting uses, and businesses can capitalize on that early on to be ahead of the pack. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.